Freak. Yeah, we're gonna start off with this car. We're gonna start off with the prelims. The first two fights, we got Derek Lua versus Marcos Rego de Lima. He's Brazilian. Shout out to the Brazilians, man. They're, they're just great people. Uh, shout out, yeah. So, Derek Lewis, man, Derek Lewis. Oh, Derek Lewis, man, you really be getting on my nerves, bro. You are, like, a, I don't know how many losing streaks. He's on, like, a four-fight lose, three straight. Who did he lose to? He lost to uh, Surreal Gone. He lost to that Silvic, Silvac, and then he lost to that, yeah, three-fight losing streak. He lost three fights. Is it three fights in a row? I gotta go check. Wait, we're gonna do a quick look. How is Derek Lewis one streak, man? I feel terrible for Derek Lewis. I mean, he one, two, three. Yeah, three fight losing streak. He lost three straight fights in a row. He's not gonna get cut because he's been in the UFC for so many years. He's headlined so many cards. They're not gonna cut him. And you know, Marcos Rodriguez de Lima. He's thirty eight. They're both the same age. Um, Lewis has a reach advantage. So, what I'm going to say here is this. I'm leaning towards the Delima over Derek Lewis because Delima is actually a pretty skilled fighter. He does throw a lot of leg kicks. He's not afraid to throw leg kicks, and he will grapple with Derek Lewis if he gets in the clinch. And I think Derek Lewis... Derek Lewis is the most dangerous fighter, but as what I've noticed, a lot of dudes, if you just get rid of past the power, you can literally finish him because Silvac freaking dominated him on the ground. I don't think the Lima's as athletic as Silvac, or not athletic, but as youthful, but he might have a good chance here. I mean, Derek Lewis killed. Sorry about that. Derek Lewis beats this guy in reach. Again, a 79 inch reach advantage over a 75, so he has a 4 inch reach advantage, which again, I guess before reaches the match if you're skilled, but this is heavyweight, so skill is kind of thrown out. We're going to throw skills out. This. Man, how tall Silvac is? Um, yeah, I can't see their wins percentage. He dominated him. He dominated him. So, um, yeah, man, this is gonna be it. personally. If you ask me, I I'm leaning towards the Lima. It's, it's like he's young, young. He's twenty eight, six three, seventy inch eight. Oh yeah, he got the reach. He just. Silvac is young. He is young, young. That's how he was video. But Delima is 35. He won't be as athletic. Delima's noticeable wins in his career. In his last. I gotta see Delima's wins. I gotta see what he's won. I haven't. And I know he beat that one Dominican dude with ease. He beat the Dominican dude with ease. Just like kicks. Because I do just not check kicks. Oh. He beat a Dominican dude. In a five round decision, he didn't finish him. He beat Andre Arlovski. He beat which a lot of people beat Andre Arlovski. It's not that hard to beat Andre Arlovski, bro. So, Andre Arlovski is like the stepping stone guy in MMA. If you fight Andre Arlovski, it's like a like I think they say you're ready for the top five. <laughs> Yeah, you're ready for a top 10 point. You're ready for the elite. See if you beat Andre Lowski. If you can't beat Andre Lowski, then uh, I don't know what to say, but he just retire. We got a lot of good guys. We lost to a lot of dudes as well. Alright. This is actually, I'm leaning towards uh, Mark um, DeLima, but I'm, I'm not counting Derek who was out. He might have the power to shock him. So, if you're going to bet, uh, I would probably, even though I said Delima has the skills, I don't think Delima has the knockout power to do any difference to Derek Lewis. Derek Lewis is a very unpredictable fighter and a very dangerous fighter. There's no youth because they're both the same age. And and uh, so, Derek Lewis is going to have to keep this at range. He doesn't just get in range. 
If you get in his grill, he sends the fold. I think Delima is going to try to do that. Do some leg kicks, jab to try to get in his range. And he's going to try to probably take him down and submit him. So it's going to be like a 45-55 Delima. That's what I'm picking. So I'm picking ahead. I'm already doing this now. Then we got Steven Wonderboy Thompson versus Misha Pujera. That's the main event. Uh, the uh, main event at the prelims. I'm leaning, and my shock out of you in the striking realms. No one's being Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy is a striking wizard. He's a, the one of the best strikers in the UFC. He's the best striker at middleweight. No one being a pure striking match. But yeah, remember, this is not a. I'm sorry, this is not a striking match. This is an MMA, and we got hands. There's grappling. I'm so sorry. And I'm the interest of Michelle Pujera. I think Michelle Pujera might entertain a striking match, but he understands that he's gonna. He has. He fully understands that in this age of his career, he has to. He's. He has to have better performances, which I think he's gonna do now, because before hand he used to just kind of be like a, like. Michelle Pujera earlier in his career was just kind of doing flashy stunts, random backflips, doing dump flips and. Stump tricks. Recently, he's tied up his game. He's been more fundamental in his. He's been more fundamental in the way he's been fighting. He is currently on a three fight win streak. Is it three? He's on a five fight five. I believe he's on a five fight win streak. You know, we don't even, yeah, five fight win streak. One, two. Oh, wait, no, he's not a five fight win streak. Yeah, yeah, five fight win streak. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he's on a five fight win streak. He's being a lot of dudes off decisions. He's been getting a lot of decision wins because he's been more fundamental to striking. But I'm telling you, in this fight, he has to start relying on his grappling and his wrestling. Stick with the wrestling, take some rest, strike with him a little bit, take him down, try to do some wrestling. I think that's just going to be his, uh, his game plan. And that's not, and I think that's what he needs to win. So I'm leaning towards my man, Misha Pera. I think it's going to be a decision, unanimous decision. I think he understands that Wonder Boy has no ground game at all. It's non existent. So I'm leaning towards Misha Pohara. And I'm just to Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy's a good fighter. I think in the striking room, he's going to struggle with Wonder Boy. But I think when he gets to the ground, it's all, it's all she wrote. And, I think, and uh, Misha Pohara is a very good grappler. He submitted like a Dagestan, some Russian dude, in one of his fights. So. Don't sleep on Michel Pujera. Now we're going to go to the main event. And this is what I love about this. Because my initial video was added. was antiquated. Because Paulo Costa was supposed to fight. Alaskarvov. Ekrim. I'm going to call him Ekrim. And he's going to fight Paulo, right? That fight got scrapped. So that's not going to happen. So that was removed from the card. Thank goodness. Well, not thank goodness. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, maybe. I guess the UFC learned from that Abu fight with Strong Strickland that throwing some of these unranked dudes to a ranked dude, you're probably throwing lambs to the slaughter, so you might as well just hold them off, build their name, get some momentum, and then let them fight. Because I think Ar Arkham is fighting in um, he's fighting in Abu Dhabi. So, I need to stay on topic. <laughs> we're going to talk about that later. Abu Dhabi card later. We're going to talk about the first card in the main event is going to be Michael Chiesa versus Kevin Holland, which I find it upset why Kevin Holland is the pay per view, not Wonder Boy. But I mean, I guess Kevin Holland has a fan base. And, yeah, and that's again, this is the, that fight to toss up if you ask me, because I don't know who's gonna win. Um, is Michael Chiesa still somewhat athletic? Not athletic, still has some youth in him, because you need youth at Walter weight. Uh, Kevin Holland isn't the fastest guy, but he does hit hard, and he has better, way better striking than uh, Michael Chiesa. So, if Chiesa 
Kinky at the takedown. I don't know, man. This is a 51-49. Close to fight. The reason why it's close is due to the fact that I have the unpredictable factor that I can't predict truly accurate for this fight. Because my, it's about Michael Chiesa. Does Michael Chiesa still have it? Michael Chiesa hasn't fought in in such a long time. He's gone fights canceled. He hasn't fought since tw he hasn't fought in a year. That's ridiculous. And he's coming off a three fight losing streak. No, two fight losing streak. Two fight losing streak. Haha. <laughs> fake news. Fake news. He hasn't. This is absurd. He literally has lost fights. He lost to Vicente Luque and Sean Brady. And his last ones were to like old guys. He beat Cuddles, Condit, and Anthony. He lost to Anthony Perez. That's just, wow, what a scrub. His last win was Diego. Uh, last win. His last win was, Ra was Rafael de Santos. It's Anjos. In, 20, in 2020. He's in, he lost three times in a row. That's absurd. Guys, man, Kevin Holland might actually get this dub. He might actually get this dub. I think this might be a three-round decision. I'm going to say, I was going to say Michael Chiesa, but it's like Kevin Holland has no grappling. Like, his grappling game is non-existent, dude. And that's the problem. And, um... I'm gonna I'm a realist, so I'm gonna really pick my Kevin Holland. I'll say Mike Yes. I don't know man. I might say this is a fifty fifty toss up. Because you have Kevin Holland who's not that fast, but can be easy to get down. Literally, you cannot grapple this man. This man his ground game is zero. His um but Michael Kiesa isn't there. He's been cracked. He's been Dar choked. He's he's took in a lot of losses. So I am leaning towards Kevin Holland in this fight, even though Michael Chiesa isn't skilled. There's no striking whatsoever, and he can't just bully Kevin Holland. Well, he probably could, but like he's 35 years old. I don't know who's the underdog or the overdog in this. I'm leaning towards Kevin Holland as the overdog. Al Kias is the underdog. Yeah, call. That's what I'm assuming. So, I'm leaning towards Kevin Holland. But it's a 50-50 toss-up. I have no idea. I'm going to say Kevin Holland, but I could be completely wrong. So, yeah. Next fight, Tony Ferguson versus Bobby Green. Tony Ferguson is a shell of the man he used to be. And Bobby Green, he's not a shell, but his he fights too much with his hands low. And he got caught in the last two fights. Well, his last fight. His last fight, he was looking good, but, I mean, he did headbutt that dude, but whatever. Oh, the age difference is ridiculous. 39 to 36. Man, I'm the angels of Bobby Green. I'm sorry, Tony Frick. Tony Frick to shock the world, but, like, Tony, bro, you, you, you're not that guy, bro. You, you, lost, you lost a whole step. When he was fighting Nate, he looked, he looked like he was slow. Like, that knockout really changed him. He got knocked out. Like, he got knocked out. He went to sleep. And Bobby Green is a way better boxer. And he's quick, he's fast, and he's still slick. I think Bobby Green got this. He didn't look that terrible his last fight, which is, I guess, now ruled a no contest. Yeah. He was looking good. Yeah, 29. He was landing 33. Yeah, he looked pretty good against Jaron Gordon. Until that headbutt came in and... You know, changed everything. It's you know what I love about the internet. He says he's changing his name to King because he doesn't want to be called Bobby Green. Now it still says Bobby Green. It doesn't say King. So that's hilarious. But yeah, how many is Bobby Green? Now we got to the other card, the co-main event. Man, I'm not gonna lie to you. This I actually do some this a little bit of research. Jan Blachowicz versus Alex Pojera. Look, uh, this is unrelated. No, 
I ate a pastel. You know what a pastel is? Look it up. So we already know who I'm going to pick, but I'm just going to take, explain to you that. So we already know off that rib, we know I'm picking, you know, Alex Pohera. But I don't, so I didn't watch the fights, their last couple fights. And Pohera still looked good. He still looked sharp. I want to see, does he still look sharp? I mean, that's something I got to see. His defense has still looked good. He didn't look terrible. He didn't look slow. He still looked sharp against Izzy. He looked sharp when he did a little spar with Strickland. He <laughs> still looks good. Then you got Tony Ferguson, who is um, not Tony Ferguson, Jan Blachowicz. Jan Blachowicz looks slow. I think he's 41. He's 40. Yeah, Jan Blachowicz looks noticeably slower. His boxing looks off. His leg kicks still look good. I think his leg kicks still have the power. But Pohera, I want to see, can Pohera's leg survive, can survive the kick? Can Pohera's boxing deep, improve his defense or his boxing after that easy performance? Which he looked good, a little better in his defense than he got caught. I'm leaning towards Pohera because Pohera, A, is way more skilled than Jan Blachowicz. I think Pohera is way more skilled, and I think his defense is going to be more on point. But the only problem is the wrestling. I, I believe Pohero can stop the wrestling. I don't think Yamblahovich is that good of a grappler. Because Yamblahovich, the only reason he, he was able to take out Israel Adesanya was because he physically muscled him. He didn't really use any real technique. Like I told you before, I explained this one episode. I explained again, he put his head on the outside. He didn't put his head on the inside into his abdomen, into his rib cage. He put his head on the outside and led with his head. And not in the right direction. He just muscled his knee, just laid there, he didn't do anything. I think Pohera is bigger, and he'll be more technical to stop the takedowns. Because I, cause I'm, I'm positive that Glover Tashira is working on that takedown defense. He is on Pohera's ass on takedown defense, all right? He is on him. He is on him on takedown defense and how to stop the takedown. Number two, striking. He needs to improve his his defense in MMA striking because he still has the same defense that he has when he kickbox. He's slowly losing it, but now it's it's like here it has to be pivotal. Like he has to now have that MMA striking defense, not the kickboxing deep striking defense with the big gloves. He needs to 100% commit because he looked like he got rid of it a little bit against the Israel fight. But you know, it, it is what it is. I'm the interest for her. Uh, 60 40. Pohera is a big favorite for me. I'm leaning heavily towards him. I think Pohera got this. I could be wrong, but I'm the interest for her, man. Pohera got this fight. I think he's not going to. Uh, at first, I thought this was going to be a hard matchup. Like, oh, man, you know, Jan Blachowicz is kind of a difficult fight. But the more and more I started watching more, I'm like, it's looking a lot easier because. Jan Blachowicz isn't as fast anymore. He's still a little slow. He might st- still have power. I think Pohera is just more skilled. My question is the defense is can he check, can he handle, can he check one of uh, Pohera's kicks? And can um, Alex Pohera not just check the kicks, but work around the defense and stop the takedown? So I think Pohera is way more technical, snappy of a striker. And he can, he was, he's going to see all those kicks. So, for her. I just recurgitated the same point. So, yeah, I'm at 24 minutes. That's a good time. Great time. Great time. We can talk about the main event. We got Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier versus Justin Gagey. A rematch. The first time they fought, that was crazy. But this time, you know, Gagey's been walking backwards and. Dustin still looks good. I, I, I still think Dustin's going to win this. The reason why is Gagey isn't as durable as Dustin. And also, Gagey's not going to take down Dustin Poirier to the ground. All right? He's not going to do that. G- Gagey does that. He's going to get freaking submitted. Gagey's ground game does not exist. One thing I learned when Gagey fought Fiziv was the body. And I'm telling you right now, he was getting hit in the body a lot. Even though that I thought that counted, I thought because that's Jake Gagey's a headhunter. He just hunts the head, and he does those powerful leg kicks. And Dust Poirier 
I'm gonna say Geiji. Geiji throws a lot of power, and he headhunts, and he throws a lot of leg kicks. Poirier doesn't check leg kicks, which is a big problem to me in his game. And I don't think Poirier is skilled enough to take Geiji down, so I think Poirier needs to learn how to check a kick in this fight. But it doesn't matter because if Gage is walking backwards, it's hard to throw leg kicks walking backwards. And I think when it comes to boxing skill, Dustin is a way more skilled boxer than Gage. Gage is a bit, you know, reckless. Why those uppercuts? We know he loves his uppercuts, right? So I think Dustin's going to be more leaning away from the power hand. I mean, heavily towards Dustin. I think Dustin's a bit more skilled when it comes to the striking realm where Gage. Even though he's learned to walk backwards, his body's always open. And I think Dustin should aim for the body and try to do more liver shots. Like, no one ever attacks Dustin at Gagey. No one attacks Gagey in the liver. But Dustin, I think, is better. He's more adorable. I think he's way more defensively responsible than Gagey because Gagey at times is kind of wide open. Because he got clipped. Gagey got clipped a lot against Chandler. Like, clipped a lot on the feet with Chandler. And it's Fazeev. Dustin got clipped at the end, and he came back and almost practically finished Chandler in the first round. Literally, if, if Gage, Dustin would have had, like, 30 more seconds, he would have finished Chandler. We're not even going to debate that. He would have finished Chandler. But, I mean, towards Dustin. I think Dustin got this. This is an easy fight. He got in the bag. You know that noise in the back. It seems like I say that every episode. I lean to my man, Dustin Poirier. I know I'm saying it, his accent weird, but it is what it is. So, yeah, that's my prediction for UFC 291.